The Magic Treehouse Research Guide, Rainforests, a nonfiction companion to Afternoon on the Amazon by Will Osborne and Mary Pope Osborne. Dear readers, when we travel through the Amazon rainforest in Afternoon on the Amazon, we learn that rainforests are amazing places. But we didn't really understand how amazing they are until we got back to Frog Creek. We discovered that lots of things we use every day come from rainforests around the world. We learned that there are more different kinds of animals and plants in rainforests than anywhere else on the earth. And we learned lots of reasons why it's really important to keep the rainforests of the world from being destroyed. How did we learn all these things? We did research. We went to the library and checked out rainforest books. We found rainforest websites on the internet. We rented a video about rainforest animals at our local video store. We took notes and drew pictures. Then we shared what we learned with our parents and teachers and friends. Now we want to share our research with you. So get your notebook, get your backpack, and get ready to explore the incredible world of rainforests by Jack and Annie. Chapter 1. What is a rainforest? Rainforests are rich and wonderful worlds. They are filled with tall trees, strange animals, giant bugs, and amazing plants. The largest flowers in the world grow in rainforests. The smallest frogs and the biggest spiders live in rainforests too. There are rainforests all around the world. Each rainforest has different kinds of plants and creatures living in it. But most rainforests are alike in several ways. Rainforests get lots of rain. That's why we call them rainforests. In most rainforests, it rains nearly every day. Often there are thunderstorms. Nearly all rainforests get over 6 feet of rain per year. Many get more than 16 feet of rain, and some get as much as 30. We think of Seattle, Washington as a very rainy city, but Seattle only gets 3 feet of rain per year. Rainforests have very high humidity. Humidity is the amount of moisture in the air. Even when it isn't raining, the air in the rainforest feels wet and steamy. Water cycle of a rainforest. Moist air forms clouds. Rain clouds fall. Roots soak up moisture. Water released into the air. Waters are very warm. The temperature in most rainforests stays between 75 and 80 degrees all year long. In most rainforests, there isn't much difference between winter and summer. The temperature is warm and the humidity is almost high. Rainforest, lots of rain, high humidity, warm temperature, weather stays the same. Tropical rainforests. Most rainforests are called tropical forests. That means they grow near an imaginary line that runs all the way around the middle of the earth. This line is called the equator. The biggest tropical rainforest is the Amazon rainforest in South America. The Amazon rainforest is bigger than the states of Texas, California, Colorado, Florida, Nevada, Arizona, Oregon, Minnesota, and Alaska combined. There are also large tropical rainforests in Central America, Africa, Asia, New Guinea, Australia, and many islands in the Pacific Ocean. More different kinds of animals, insects, and plants live in tropical rainforests than anywhere else on Earth. Rainforests around the world. Chapter 2. Layers of a Tropical Rainforest A tropical rainforest is like a building with several different floors. The floors are called strata, or layers. Each layer is home to, for different kinds of plants and creatures. The canopy. The tops of the trees in a forest form a layer called the canopy. The understory. Beneath the canopy and in the emergence is a layer called the understory. The understory is dark and shadowy. That's because the leaves of the canopy are so close together that only a bit of sun shines through. The trees in the understory are not very tall. Some of the young trees that will grow to become part of the canopy. But most understory trees never grow taller than about 15 feet. Several different kinds of wild cats live in the understory. The understory is also home for all sorts of bats, owls, monkeys, snakes, and lizards. Ocelots look like a beautiful house cat, only twice as big. The forest floor. The bottom layer of a rainforest is the forest floor. The forest floor is very dark and quiet. The ground is covered with rotting leaves. A few ferns and bushes grow among the giant trunks of the canopy trees. 
The animals that live on the forest floor are not nearly as noisy as those on the canopy and understory. Jaguars prowl silently looking for food. Snakes slither over tree roots. Millions of insects and spiders creep through the carpet of dead leaves. Each layer of rainforest can seem like a separate world, but all the plants and animals in a rainforest are connected. They depend on each other to survive. This is called interdependence. Turn the page to see an example of rainforest interdependence at work. This way. The interdependence of figs and fig trees, fig wasps, monkeys, bats, and birds. Tiny fig wasps lay their eggs in fig tree flowers. The wasps carry pollen from flowers and of, of other fig trees. Pollen causes flowers the wasps had laid their eggs in to produce fruits. The fruits are full of fig seeds. Monkeys, bats, and birds eat the fruits and spread the seeds into the other parts of the forest. New fig trees grow where seeds are dropped. Chapter 3 Rainforest Plants More than half of all the different kinds of plants on earth grow in rainforests. Many rainforest plants have not ever been discovered or named yet, but some that we do know about are truly amazing. There are plants that eat insects. There are plants with fruits longer than baseball bats. There are plants with flowers bigger than bicycle tires. Epiphytes Many rainforest plants are called epiphytes. Epiphytes grow on trees or other plants. They have roots that never touch the ground. Most rainforest epiphytes grow high on the trees of the canopy where there is plenty of sunlight. One rainforest tree can have more than 50 different kinds of epiphytes growing on it. Rainforest orchid Nearly all orchids are epiphytes. There are over 20,000 different kinds of orchids in the rainforests of the world. Vines. There are also lots of vines in the rainforest canopy and understory. Vines have roots in the ground but climb up the trunks of trees to reach the sunlight. Many rainforest vines have hard woody stems. These vines are called lianas. Some lianas have stems so thick that they look like twisted trees. Liana. This liana is sometimes called a monkey ladder. Rainforest lianas often loop from tree to tree. The lianas and branches of the canopy and understory make it easy for monkeys, squirrels, and other animals to travel through the forest. Orangutan. Many of the plants that grow in the understory and on the forest floor have huge leaves. Big leaves help these plants take in as much of the shadowy light as possible. Fungi. Some plants don't need sunlight to grow. These plants are called fungi. Fungi live off dead plants and animal matter. Many, plant, many kinds of fungi grow on the trunks of dead trees or on the shady forest floor. Turn the page to learn more about some of our favorite rainforest plants. Our favorite rainforest plants. Tropical pitcher plant. Special parts of these tropical vines grow in the shape of pitchers. The pitchers collect the water when it rains. The pitchers on tropical pitcher plants have a smell that attracts insects. They're also very slippery. When an insect lands on the rim of one of the pitchers, it slips down into the water inside. The insect drowns and the pitcher plant uses it for food to help it grow. Tropical pitcher plants grow in Southeast Asia and Australia. The pitchers on some tropical pitcher plants can hold half a gallon of water. Giant Rafflesia grow in the rainforest of Asia. Giant Rafflesia. The giant Rafflesia is the biggest flower in the world. The flower blooms on the forest floor, but the rest of the Rafflesia plant is hidden underground. Some giant Rafflesia flowers are three feet across. They can weigh up to 25 pounds. That's heavier than a beagle. Most flowers smell sweet, but the giant Rafflesia stinks and smells like rotten meat. Sausage tree. Sausage trees have beautiful red flowers. The flowers bloom at sunset and last for only one night. During the night, bats come to feed on the nectar and pollen of the flowers. The flowers hang from long, thin stalks so bats can visit them easily. When the flowers drop off in the morning, huge fruits start to grow in their place. The fruits can grow to be three feet long. When they're ripe, the tree looks like it's covered in giant sausages. Sausage trees grow in the rainforests of Africa. Strangler trees grow in the rainforests of Asia, South America, and Africa. The strangler tree is a, a strangler tree begins life as a liana, but later becomes a tree. A strangler fig first begins to grow high into a canopy tree where monkeys, birds, and bats have dropped seeds. 
It l sends leafy shoots to the top of the tree to soak up sunlight. At the same time, it sends roots down the tree trunk toward the ground. When the roots reach the ground, they grow thicker and stronger. They begin to form a trunk of their own. The new trunk completely surrounds the tree the strangler fig has been growing on. Eventually, the old tree dies and rots away. The strangler fig has stolen its place in the forest. Chapter 4 Rainforest Creatures They creep and they crawl. They flit and fly. They growl and howl. The world's rainforest are alive with millions of animals, bugs, and birds. Predators and protection. Most rainforest animals depend on animals for food. Animals that kill and eat other animals are called predators. The, pre the animals that predators kill are called their prey. Many rainforest creatures have special ways of protecting themselves from predators. Some have colors that help them blend with their natural surroundings. This kind of protection is called camouflage. Lizards like this gecko have skin that look like rocks and dirt. Some creatures fool predators by looking like plants. If they stay very still, predators will leave them alone because they won't see them. Insects like this katydid have wings that just look like leaves. Stick insects look just like twigs. Some creatures scare predators away by looking bigger and scarier than they really are. Many moths and butterflies have marks on their wings that look like one big eye. Big eyes. When the creatures open their wings, predator th predators think that the eyes belong to a creature that might eat them. Marks like these are called eye spots. Predators use camouflage too. This vine snake looks more like a vine than a snake until it attacks its prey. Night creatures. The rainforest is just as alive as, at night as it is during the day. Many creatures come out only after the sun has gone down. They are called nocturnal creatures. Many nocturnal creatures have very large eyes. Their big eyes let in more light and help them see in the moonlit forest. Bats are common nocturnal creatures. There are hundreds of different kinds of bats in the world's rainforest. Many bats have a strong sense of smell that helps them find fruits and flowers in the dark. Others use sound to find and capture insects and to find their way in the light. At night, rainforest trees twinkle with fireflies and click beetles. Scientists think insects like these talk to each other with their flashing lights. Water Creatures Rivers run through most of the rainforests of the world. Thousands of different kinds of fish live in these rivers. Snakes, crocodiles, and lizards slither and sleep on the banks. Anacondas attack animals that come to the river for a drink of water. Some rainforest crocodiles are over 20 feet long. Flesh-eating piranha have sharp, scary, razor-sharp teeth. They, are, they mostly eat berries, fruit, seeds, and other fish. Turn the page to meet more incredible creatures of the rainforest. Our favorite rainforest animals. Army ants. Army ants have painful stingers. They raid the rainforest floor in large swarms searching for food. A swarm of marching army ants travel in about a foot every minute. Sometimes there are more than a million ants in the swarm. And army ants catch and kill spiders and insects. Sometimes they also kill small animals that can't get out of their way. Army ants don't eat people, but you still wouldn't want to be in their path. A sting from an army ant really hurts. Army ants live in rainforests in South America. Bird-eating tarantulas don't eat birds very often. They are much more to eat frogs, snakes, mice, and lizards. The bird-eating tarantula, the goliath spider. The bird-eating tarantula is one of the biggest spiders in the world. A bird-eating tarantula can be 11 inches from the tip of one leg to another. That's bigger than a baseball glove. Bird-eating tarantulas have sharp, curved fangs. Their fangs can be over one inch long. Bird-eating tarantulas live in the rainforests of South America. Queen Alexandra's Birdwing Butterfly the Queen Alexandra's bird wing is the biggest butterfly in the world. This butterfly has a wingspan of a foot wide. The Queen Alexandra's bird wing is beautiful but dangerous. It is poisonous to eat. Creatures who eat it get very sick but do not usually die. The Queen Alexandra's bird wing is very rare. It lives in only a small area of rainforest in New Guinea. The Goliath Beetle Imagine an insect as big as a mouse with long horns and six sharp claws. That's the goliath beetle of the African rainforest. The goliath beetle is the heaviest insect in the world. It can weigh as much as a small hamster. It can be four inches long. The goliath beetle has two sharp hooks on each one of their six legs. They use these hooks to clamp down on the side of trees. Once a goliath beetle has attached itself to something, it is impossible to pull it off. The goliath beetle lives in the rainforests of Africa. The red-eyed tree frog. 
Red-eyed tree frogs mostly eat flies and other insects, but sometimes they eat other frogs. Red-eyed tree frogs usually hunt at night. Their huge eyes help them see better in the dark. They have sticky fingers and toes that help them mold, hold on to the slippery tree trunks, branches, and leaves. The red-eyed tree frogs lay their eggs in plants that hang over streams. When they hatch, the tadpoles plop right into the water. The red-eyed tree frogs live in the rainforest of Central and South America. The poison arrow frog. Poison arrow frogs are tiny but deadly. Most poison arrow frogs are only an inch long, but they have a poison in their skin that isn't strong enough to kill anything that eats them. One poison arrow frog has enough poison to kill over a hundred people. The bright colors of poison arrow frogs warn other animals that they are dangerous to eat. They got their name because of hundreds of years hunters in the rainforest have used their poison on arrows and darts. Poison arrow frogs live in the rainforest of Central and South America. The sloth. Sloths are some of the slowest moving creatures in the world. It could take a sloth over an hour to cross an average sized living room. Sloths have long curved claws. Their claws are pretty scary, but claws never attack other animals. They only eat leaves. Sloths use their claws as hooks to hang on tree branches. In fact, sloths live most of their lives hanging upside down. Sloths live in rainforests in Central and South America. The toucan. There are about 40 different kinds of toucans in the rainforest of Central and South America. Toucans have huge, colorful bills. They use their giant bills like scissors to snip berries and fruits from the branches of trees and bushes. A toucan's bill isn't as heavy as it looks. It's a thin, hollow shell over a bony skeleton. When toucans go to sleep, they turn their heads to the side and lay their bills on their backs. Then they fold their tails over their bills to cover them up. The plate-billed mountain toucan. Toucans live in the rainforest of Central and South America. The jaguar. Jaguars are beautiful big cats. Male jaguars can be 6 feet long and weigh 250 to 300 pounds. That's as big as a professional football player. Jaguars are good climbers. They often hide in rainforest trees waiting to pounce on deer, wild pigs, and other animals that roam on the forest floor. Unlike most cats, jaguars are also good swimmers. They swim in rainforests and cover to catch fish, turtles, and even crocodiles. Sadly, there are few jaguars left in rainforests. Many have been killed off by hunters for their beautiful fur. Jaguars live in the rainforests of Central and South America. The pangolin. The pangolin are some of the weirdest looking animals in the rainforest. They have long, skinny heads. They have stubby legs with huge, sharp claws. They have no teeth. Strangest of all, their bodies are covered in thick, big scales. When a pangolin is scared, it rolls into a tight ball. Its scales protect it from any animal that tries to attack it. Pangolins are sometimes called scaly anteaters. That's because ants are their favorite food. They usually go hunting for ants at night. People of the Rainforest Thousands of people live in the rainforest around the world. For centuries, they've gotten everything they've needed from the plants and animals of the forest. Hunter, gatherers. People of the rainforest usually live in small groups. Many get their food by hunting wild animals and gathering wild plants to eat. People call this way of living hunter-gatherers. The Mabudi people are hunter-gatherers. They live deep in the Ituri rainforest of the Congo region of Africa. The Mabudi hunt with spears and hunt with bows and arrows. They also trap animals with large nets made from vines. They hunt antelopes, forest hogs, el buffalo, elephants, monkeys, and other animals. They use the animal meat for food. They make tools and clothes from the other parts of the animals. Almost nothing is wasted. In the past, Mabuti killed only what they needed for themselves and their families. Today, they also trade with villagers who lived on the edge of the forest. While Mabuti men hunt, women and children gather roots, nuts, fruits, snails, termites, and ants for food. Sometimes they catch fish or crabs. The Mabuti move every few weeks to a new place in the forest looking for wild animals and plants. The women and children set up a new camp. They build huts from branches and large leaves. They build a whole village of huts in just a few hours. Mabuti huts are shaped like beehive. There's only enough room for a few people to sleep inside. The Mabuti make beautiful paintings on cloth made from bark. Men collect the bark from trees. They soften it with water and pound it with a hammer. Sometimes the women can paint designs on the bark. Sometimes they paint pictures of forest creatures. Music is an important part of Mabuti life. The Mabuti play rattles and drums. They sing when they hunt, gather honey, or set up a new hum or, or home or play games. The Mabuti use art and music as a way to honor the guardian spirit of the forest. The Mabuti... 
believe that the forest spirit is like a parent who watches over them and protects them. For this reason, they call themselves children of the forest. Every day they thank the forest for all the gifts it gives them. Hunter gardeners. Some rainforest people get their food by raising crops as well as hunting and gathering from the forest. People who live this way are called hunter gardeners. Hunter gardeners clear land for their crops by cutting down trees and burning them. They plant seeds in the ashes of the burned trees. The ashes make the soil better for growing plants. Hunter gardeners usually grow their crops in the same place for only a few years. Then they move their field to an ain't another place so that the rainforest trees and plants have a chance to grow back. It might be 20 years before they plant in the same place again. The Yanomami people are hunter gardeners. They tend small gardens in the Amazon rainforest. They grow bananas, yams, and sweet potatoes. They also grow plantains, which are large, tough bananas. They roast the plantains on coals and boil them in pots. Besides growing their crops, the Yanomami gather nuts, mushrooms, and honey. They also hunt birds and catch frogs and insects to eat. The Yanomami boys learn to hunt at a very young age. For shelter, the Yanomami build large huts from tree branches and palm leaves. They build their huts in a large circle. In the evening, families come together inside the circle to tell stories. The Yanomami especially like to tell stories about jaguars, the most feared animal in the forest. For many centuries, the Yanomami lived as their ancestors had lived. They had very little contact with people from outside the world, but recently all that changed. In the 1980s, gold was discovered along the border between Brazil and Venezuela. This is the area where the Yanomami lived for centuries. Yet thousands of people from outside the forest invaded Yanomami lands to mine the gold. The gold miners have upset Yanomami life by cutting down trees and building roads. Their noisy planes and equipment have scared away animals. The miners have also introduced new diseases to the Yanomami, such as malaria, flu, and the measles. Governments of South American countries are now trying to protect the Yanomami people in their land. Like the Mabuti, the Yanomami have lived, in the, have lived for many years in peace with the rainforest. They believe that nature creates everything and that people should love and respect the forest. Rainforest people like the Yanomami and the Mabuti have many things to teach those who live outside the rainforest. They can share their knowledge about what plants are good to eat, which are poisonous, and which are good for medicine. Most important, the people of the rainforest can teach others how to take what is needed from the forest without destroying it. Growing up in the rainforest. Rainforest children learn a lot about growing up in the forest. Here are some of their lessons. What to eat. Some rainforest plants and animals are poisonous. Rainforest children learn what's good to eat and what's dangerous. How to hunt, gather, and cook. Girls learn to find good plants to eat and how to cook them. Boys learn to hunt animals with spears, bows, and arrows, and nets. 3. How to have fun. Most rainforest people tell stories together at the end of the day. They sometimes dance and sing. Rainforest children learn the dances and songs and stories from their parents and other relatives. Chapter 6. Gifts of the Rainforest. Rainforests can seem like magical, faraway places, but many things we use every day come from rainforest around the world. Think about what you did yesterday. Did you eat a banana or a tomato? Bananas and tomatoes were first discovered in the rainforest. Did you sit on a chair or at a desk? You may be sitting on the wood of a rainforest tree. Did you ride in a car or bus or on a bicycle? Tires are made from rubber. Rubber was first made from the sap of a tree found in rainforests. Draining sap from a rubber tree doesn't hurt the tree. Many food products originally came from rainforests. These forests and spices are so familiar to us that they that we can hardly imagine a world without them. They include oranges, pineapples, grapefruits, avocados, black pepper, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, coffee, peanuts, cashew nuts, uh, chicle, the stuff that makes chewing gum chewy, and cocoa beans used to make chocolate. Many of these food products are now grown on large farms, but all were first found in rainforests around the world. Cacao tree pods have cocoa beans inside them. Rainforest medicine. Another important gift of the rainforest is medicine. For thousands of years, rainforest people have treated sickness with rainforest plants. Now scientists all over the world study the plants of the rainforest to find treatments for disease. The rosy periwinkle is a flower that grows in the rainforests of after Africa. It is used in medicines to treat several kinds of cancer. Other rainforest plants produce medicines for heart disease, high blood pressure, and stomach problems. Scientists hope that they will sometime discover cures for AIDS and other terrible diseases in rainforest plants. 
Global warming. The rainforests of the world are important in another way. They help control the Earth's climate. The air around the Earth is called the atmosphere. The Earth's atmosphere is filled with different kinds of gases. One of these gases is oxygen. Humans and animals need oxygen to breathe. Another kind of gas in the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide helps the atmosphere hold heat from the sun. But many scientists believe too much carbon dioxide can cause a problem. It can make the Earth too hot. Scientists call this problem global warming. Trees and plants need carbon dioxide to live and grow. The millions of rainforest trees and plants take huge amounts of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. In this way, they help protect our planet and all of its creep creatures from global warming. This might be the rainforest's greatest gift of all. Gifts from the rainforest. Food, wood, rubber, medicine, protection from global warming. Future gifts. Scientists have studied only a small number of plants and animals in the rainforests. There are many valuable things yet to be discovered. Different kinds of fruits, nuts, and other food from the rainforest might help the world's people. New kinds of medicines may be found in rainforest plants that haven't been discovered yet. Even new kinds of fuel for homes and cars might be found. As long as rainforests keep growing and thriving, they will have endless gifts to give the earth. A rainforest in your kitchen. Many houseplants grow wild in the rainforests of the world. Bananas are now grown in many places around the world, but they were first discovered in tropical rainforests. Chocolate comes from a pod that is the fruit of a cacao tree. This, is, this tree was first discovered in the Amazon rainforest. Chapter 7, Saving the Rainforests. Rainforests are one of the Earth's most valuable resources, but the rainforests in the world are in danger. They are being destroyed very quickly. People are cutting down huge number of trees without plant replanting them. They're clearing out large areas of land to build roads and houses. They're also clearing land to grow crops and raise cattle. Half the world's rainforests have already been lost. Every second an area of rainforest the size of a baseball field has been destroyed. Every rainforest is home to some plants and animals that live nowhere else in the world. When a forest is destroyed, these plants and animals are destroyed with it. Environmentalists. The natural world is sometimes called the environment. People who study the natural world and work to protect it are called environmentalists. Environmentalists are working with the government in countries that have rainforests. They are also working with rainforest people and learning from them. They are trying to find ways to help the world get what it needs from the rainforest without destroying them. Nat nature reserves. Nature reserves are places where land is protected by the government. Humans are not allowed to harm the animals and plants in a nat nature reserve. They are now nature reserves and rainforests all over the world. Endangered species. Some rainforest animals are becoming very rare. For example, there were once thousands of woolly spider monkeys in South American rainforests. Now there are only several hundred. When an animal like the woolly spider monkey is in danger of dying out completely, it's said to be an endangered species. There are laws all over the world against killing endangered species. Sadly, many people ignore these laws. In the last animal, if the last animal of an endangered species dies, that kind of animal becomes extinct. It is gone from the earth forever. Nearly 95% of the woolly spider monkey's forest home has been destroyed. How kids can help? The more people know about rainforests, the more they care about them, and the harder they wor will work to protect them. One of the best things you can do to save the rainforest is to learn about them. Then share what you learn with your friends and family. Tell them about the wonderful gifts of the rainforests. Tell them about the amazing plants and animals that live there. Tell them how important rainforests are to our planet. In this way, kids everywhere can help protect and save these wonderful worlds.